Do you need like a teleprompter or something? Yes, yeah, I need a cue. Cue. And okay. action. <laughs> Well, I'm. I get self-conscious about my Jewish nose when when you uh, yeah you know, at a certain angle. And you got burn too. I probably yeah. I, well, I was out in the sun all day, yeah. most of the day, and yesterday too. So I'm not surprised. Anyway, it's uh, evidence of my Semitic heritage mixed in with who knows what over the centuries <laughs> before it got to North America. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother was a blonde-haired and blue-eyed. Yeah, she was my grandfather's second cousin. I'm glad I had, didn't enter a breeding program with you. No, no, that's fine. Second cousins. And he first saw her when he stayed at her house in Lutz. He was uh, living out in the country at the time, and uh, he just got smitten by her when he first met her. And uh, he was on his way to America. And he told her, if, if you want to come, I'll send you the money for the passage. And then he left. And she waited two years and then she decided that she wanted to go. And indeed, he sent her the tickets, and she got as far as London from Lutz in Poland, and then just couldn't bear to be away from her family and had some doubts and went all the way home. And he sent her another passage, and this time she went. A story of great romance, you know, international travel and intrigue, you know, and how the Jews got spread all over the place. Yeah, the diaspora yeah. never finished. No, it's not quite done. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's a rather permanent, actually. <laughs> Like, there's plenty of Jews that have no desire to go back to the Holy Land. Oh, the Holy yeah. Land is like right here, honey. Yeah. It's right here. Right here. Wherever you live is the Holy Land. Look, there's a Lion of Zion. That's my basic uh, operating principle. That wherever I am living is paradise, is the Garden of Eden, is the Holy Land of holies is the place I reside. And that makes it a lot simpler. It means I, I don't have to go anywhere seeking that which I already have. Yeah, we used to say Israel is a state of mind. Well, yeah, as all countries are. They're total um, mental creations of human beings. They, they don't exist. They only exist in the minds of humans, countries. The whole notion of a country, a border, a boundary. On this side of a line, you're American soil, and then the other side, it's Canadian soil. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all about the soil. So, fertile soil. Yeah, fertile soil. And, and that's why I became involved in agricultural development work and in my own unique way. I learned a lot, I traveled extensively. I worked in Pakistan first, then Sudan, then returned to Canada, and I was in Cape Breton Island developing a tourist and agricultural project on the Cabot Trail. And then I returned to Ontario and began creating a international goat development organization with friends of mine that I had known for years who were also in the goat industry from a different angle. And that was a, a, a really fun enterprise. 
We created a, a registered charity called Capricorn International to promote Canadian goats and goat keeping around the world. And our first project was on the island of St. Lucia in the Caribbean. And I had the good fortune of going down there and actually implementing the project. And I was there two years and had an, an amazing experience with the local population and the local population of goats. And uh, it was very entertaining as well as enlightening. After that, I returned to Ottawa and instead of immediately moving back to the countryside, I stayed in the city for three years. I was looking after my children who were living with me at the time, all four of them. The eldest was 19, the youngest was seven, so, or eight, <laughs> or nine. Anyway, they were um, living with me in, in Ottawa, and I became involved with another great passion of mine, which is renewable energy and energy efficiency and sustainable building practices, which in 1987 were pretty esoteric. And there was only people on the fringes that were even thinking about these concepts. And, and, and I became um, part of a group that was implementing advanced concepts in house construction, energy efficiency, renewable energy. Then I moved with my second wife out to the country again. This time I returned to the area of my first adventures in eastern Ontario, Lanark County, but this time as a more respectable um, owner of a little dairy farm, goat dairy farm, uh, and a gallery. We were right on the road that runs from Perth up to Lanark, a busy road, and my second wife was a artist and uh, she got the opportunity to produce as much art as she liked and hang it on the walls of the gallery that we created in this old farmhouse. I developed a small goat dairy. I turned what used to be a, an old woodshed attached to the farmhouse into a, a little dairy production unit and produced uh, goat cheese and yogurt and sold uh, fresh milk and uh, made uh, feta cheeses and all kinds of gelatos. And um, it was uh, quite a nice little enterprise that we ran for a few years. After that, I moved to West Virginia and took a position managing a sustainable agriculture demonstration farm near Moyers, West Virginia, run by the Lightstone Foundation. And that was fun too, it's challenging. After my contract ended, I returned to Ontario, but not to the farmhouse outside of Perth. Instead, I returned to a property on Shaw's Creek Road, a 200 acre estate owned by my wife's cousin, where we came to live in order to manage the estate for the owner. And at the same time, I hooked up with a group of people that were trying to create an eco-village somewhere in southern Ontario within commuting distance of the Toronto Waldorf School. Eventually, that group, whole village, migrated to Caledon and over the course of the next seven years, we created an eco-village the first eco-village in Ontario. My uh, second wife and I uh, parted ways during the development phase of Whole Village, which was incredibly uh, stressful adventure. Not, not just the breakup of my marriage, but the whole birth of Whole Village was uh, not without challenges. Mm -hmm. Those have been well documented. David Ridgen, for one, and others, articles in In the Hills, 
Yeah. Whole Village is uh, notorious in, in certain circles. Yeah. Well known. A well known project, and I would say a, a very successful project, of which I'm very proud, extremely proud to have been a, uh, a participant right from the beginning. There was uh, literally thousands of people involved in the process of creating that project. But I can truthfully state it would never have happened without me and my full, wholehearted and undying devotion to creating the project in a way that uh, made sense to me. So here I am back on Shaw's Creek Road 20 years later, more than 20 years later. I moved here in 1998. So in this part of the world, I'm an old timer. People come and go a lot, as, as you know, in this part of the world. They come out with big dreams about creating farms, farming, just as a, it sounds so romantic, it, it has a, a certain appeal as something worthy, yeah. an activity which is uh, highly regarded in society, even though farmers produce food way too cheap, so they're not appreciated as much as they could, but there there are people that are really attracted to the idea of farming and and, and want to or or the idea of living in a, in a rural area. But the realities are usually um, different <laughs> than the dreams. <laughs> right, so you think you deserve the same treatment as the goats? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm often very jealous of the goats. Well, yeah. Not everybody's up for, for the uh, that kind of uh, stroking. Now I, I I must admit my my life with goats has made me a better human being. Yeah. Much more re respectful and also much less likely to back down from things that show up as challenges. You got in touch with your inner buck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. Oh, did I did I mention I was trained as a Watsu practitioner? What is that? Watsu. Watsu is a a combination of shiatsu massage and and physical manipulation of a person's body by the practitioner in a pool of very warm water, shallow water. The client floats in the water and the practitioner can manipulate them into all kinds of interesting positions quite easily and painlessly because they're in the water. And at the same time, you work on the standard, you know, meridians and pressure points that you would as any other massage practitioner. So. So these points are always tender on the yeah. piece of liver, liver meridian. And if I eat things I shouldn't eat, they get very tender. Yeah, I'd love to get back into Watsu. That would be lovely. Especially as a patient. <laughs> and then you can teach me, and then you are the teacher and the uh, subject. Yeah. You, uh, Let's get a property with an indoor pool, Angel. 
Yeah, it doesn't have to be very big in order to be suitable for Watsu. Maybe four meters across. That would be, that would be fine. You can buy Watsu pools. You get them as kits. You know, they collapse into a package. You set up a plastic framework and drape the liner over it and fill it up and it comes with a water heater and pumps and everything. So I had a uh, birthing uh, pool in my living room to deliver uh, Mishka. Right. Yeah. That was similar. He also set it up. It came in parts and yeah, that was pretty cool. And also with a liner. Anyway, so you're not very ouchy today. You didn't do any work on it. No, because I don't want to scream on camera. <laughs> I was also a Tai Chi instructor for close on 10 years. Every week we have a class. Yeah, that's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so I'm definitely going to post these to Pornhub. People that get off on people getting off while they're fully clothed. Really? Yeah, so it's really because I, I, the thing about naked people is after a while they all look alike. You know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't matter. You know? if you've seen a few thousand people, you really only want them to get dressed again. So. Make it more interesting. <laughs> Don't under underestimate the size of the uh, specialty audiences out there, as you know from your uh, poop videos. That's that's my number one attraction. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> nobody wants to see our struggles. Uh, no, but boring, boring. Let's get some like fresh poop, please. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that's where my numbers are. Yeah. That's where my subscribers are. That's where my engagement is. <laughs> People are on my site to watch horses. Shit. That's it, baby. That's my YouTube channel. <laughs> and all the other shit is just <laughs> aggravating to them. If you can give me some good old shit, steaming as it comes out fresh, I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> And that's where my comments are, my engagement is. It's all about the poop. <laughs>